Hello, my name is Philippe Patterson of Taji Magazine, your favorite critic in the D.C. area, hopefully. Um, I am here with fellow critic and also the curator founder of the D.C. Black Film Festival, Mr. Kevin Sampson. You want to give a little bit of uh, information about yourself there, Kevin? Yeah, uh, first off, Philippe, I appreciate you uh, taking the time just to interview me. Uh, you are one solid guy. Uh, if I was living in the DC area, hopefully I'd be everybody's favorite critic. But I, I think uh, you're 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 my favorite critic in the DC area, so <laughs> we'll work it that way. But yeah, I'm Kevin Sampson, founder and director of the DC Black Film Festival. Um, we're going into our seventh year. Really excited about that. Um, after completion, we can apply. Uh, to the academy to uh, hopefully be uh, an academy award nominating festival so i'm looking forward to to that and hopefully we can uh we can qualify i can't believe it's been seven years um but i'm really excited about uh this year's festival august 18th through the 30th okay so what can people look forward to when they come to the in-person version of the gc black film festival yeah, great question. So uh, the in-person part of the festival will be August 18th and 19th. It's going to be at the Miracle Theater. Since year one, we have been at the Miracle Theater. It's right there in Southeast DC. Um, we love it there. It's a one screen theater, classic uh, style theater um, right across from Barracks Row. Um, and so, you know, we had those couple of years of the lockdown and the pandemic where we were completely virtual. Last year we were back in person and we did a hybrid in person and virtual festival. And honestly, I think uh, for the most part, the public wasn't really ready to get back out there. But now that people are going to concerts, going to festivals and things like that, I definitely think that um, it's going to be a fun and exciting time. Philippe, we had uh, almost about 300 submissions this year. We whittled that down to 65. I was looking like uh, Schindler's List. Like, I wish I could have sold the ring to, you know, be able to have more films. Um, and one of the things that, at least for DC Black Film Festival, is that we don't show any films uh, more than once. So when I have 65 films that I'm screening, um, you know, it's you're going to be able to see it that one time in the block. If you miss anything, of course, you can see it virtually. But I just believe that we have so many great uh, filmmakers that are out there. And uh, I want to be able to really expose as many of them as I can. And some of the stories that we have this year are just really incredible. Okay. Are there any films that you think people would be excited about or films that you want to highlight for opening and closing night? Uh, <laughs> Can you just give us input on that? Yeah, there, there's a bunch. I mean, I don't know where to start. I can start with um, in the district. I will say that there's one film called Outside Line. It's directed by Jack Gordon. And basically, it, it captures a short documentary about Roger Carruth, who uh, at the time is at least 19. And, um, you know, he's a student at Winston-Salem in North Carolina. Uh, but he's also a NASCAR driver. Uh, and so I think that's one of the cool things about this film festival is um, just being able to see people of African descent uh, in spaces and places that we usually don't get to see them. And so to be able to see, you know, this young teenager who went from gaming to actually driving a NASCAR, um, it's a really cool uh, film to see, but then also the fact that he is from DC, I think that makes it uh, all the more better. So that that's definitely one to check out. I keep going. In. <laughs> I would also say um, Lab Rat. So I'm really excited about this one. So Lab Rat is going to be in a This Is What You Came For film block. Um, literally, as I'm program, I was programming the festival this year. Uh, a lot of times I try to find similar themes between different films. And when I saw this film, automatically I knew whatever uh, whatever the block was going to be, it was going to be called, this is what you came for. Because when I watched this film, I was like, wow, this is why we go to film festivals. Basically, Lab Rat is directed by Austin Smith, and it is a social experiment in which when people come in to the theater, you're gonna scan a QR code on your phone. And then it's like a live choose your own adventure type deal with the movie. I really, 
as I did it at home by myself, it was it was dope, it was fun, it was cool, but I can't wait to see. I don't want to give away uh, you know, what it's like to watch it with an audience because it really has you make some decisions that, uh, you know, within a group of people, some people are probably going to choose something that, you know, might not be morally or ethically correct. But I think that's really what's really fun about this movie. And so I think a lot of people will really enjoy that one. There's another one called Stitch, which um, is an American story. This is going to be within our uh, History You Should Know film block. It's directed by Arshley Tony Emil. And uh, basically, it's a story about the quilting talents of women of color. Philippe, I don't know about you, but my grandmother, she retired in doing it for the family, but for the longest, she would make quilts for us. So like when my brother and I were young, we had this quilt that she had made for us um, and she would make Afghans as well. Uh, and so every time like a child was born within our family, like my kids, you know, she made an Afghan for them. Uh, and so I say all that to say this movie really captures something that I don't think a lot of us really um, talk about. I don't, I, and again, I, I kind of wonder what your life experience is. But for me, I know that I had a grandmother that quilted. And so it kind of gives that history of how that is in our culture. Um, so I definitely think that folks will want to check that out. But I'm going to flip the script on you, Philippe. And I'm going to ask you, do you got a grandma or auntie that was quilting? Uh, of course, they quilted me all types of uh, quilts, sports quilts, uh, quilts with my uh, favorite colors and insulation, because they already know you, your feet are going to get cold. We're going to have you something to keep you warm. So I have a couple of quilts, I think. Yeah, it actually got passed up to my mother. I think she's trying to quilt. Trying. OK. Trying. OK. Yeah, <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. Um, I just feel like it's so cool to kind of it's something that we all know, but maybe we don't really talk about, right? Like if it wasn't for this, you and I probably wouldn't have just had that discussion, right? But that's what's really cool about film festivals. I'll give you one more, man. Um, Mama, which is gonna be playing during our We All We Got film block, excuse me. It's directed by Jeffrey Jackson. This is an eight minute and 35 second short film. And what I love is that some of these films this year, they really can pack a punch uh, in a short amount of time. And this one really does. It's really a coming of age story for a, a boy and his mom. And the way that it comes together, the way that it, it, it's just really well done. Um, and I think audiences will definitely be speaking afterwards. Um, speaking of which, you're, you know, you're an established critic yourself. Um, so when you are critiquing a film, what are some things you look for? What are some things that might resonate with you when you're critiquing it? Yeah, I mean, off the bat, I'm going to look at the production value, right? So that's a baseline, right? If uh, the sound is off, if I can hear the crunching of the lavalier, you know, that's going to take me out. And that's that automatically just that I'm, I know that, all right, <coughs> excuse me, either A, something happened during production or B, you know, this, yeah, you got a little bit more time you need. Uh, second is probably part of that was the cinematography, just looking at the frame in and of itself. Uh, what is the director leading my eyes to? Are they leading my eyes or are they just allowing me to decide for myself? And then of course the story, right? Making sure that the story is great, um, the acting is on point. Uh, those are some of the things that I really look for. Okay, speaking of which, what's has, what has been your some of your favorite films this year so far? Yeesh. The problem is I haven't been able to get out to the movies as much. I think you, you know you know that uh, about me a little bit. But oh, this, this is subjective, man. This is what you think so far that you've seen. Oh man, I gotta think. What really? There was something that came out in the beginning of the year, but I will say that uh, Creed three, Creed three. <laughs> yeah, we did, and we talked about that. So Creed three uh, definitely was one. Man, it's so crazy that like. That feels like that was last year, like 2022. But yes, definitely. Creed 3 was really fun. Um, I really enjoyed Mission Impossible. I felt like that it was like, honestly, coming off of Top Gun Maverick, um, I just felt like it was like, okay, Tom Cruise is really trying to take over the summers again, you know? It was fun. It was a popcorn uh, film that, you know, we, we all love. Um, and, and then coming out this weekend, I actually enjoyed Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Um, 
you know, having grown up and watch, watching the Turtles and all that kind of stuff, you know, the fact that they kind of um, had a new origin story, but I think at the same time, you can tell that like you and I, I, I think we're kind of close in the same age, but at least the folks that grew up in like, we actually went to see the 1990s movie um, or had it on VHS, you know, like you can tell that we are now in the writer's room. And so they do a really good job of uh, giving us something new and something fresh, um, but really kind of honoring the turtles that we love. So I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, I was telling somebody about that. I think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original story, it, it had so much to it. It had so much depth to it, more than what I would expect for a, a, a film based off of intellectual, intellectual property. Um, mm -hmm. And it just kind of recaptures that, that, you know, that authenticity of um, being people being teenagers. All yeah. around. And I like the way they tied it all together at the end. So that's, that was right. my, I was like, oh my goodness, they tied everything up at the end. All right. <laughs> Right. And I, I think, you know, it, it's kind of funny because as, as the story kept going on, I kept thinking, man, they really care what everybody thinks about them. And and I'm like, but that that was how I was when you were a t teenager, you know, like you, you're you worried about what, what are people going to think? And so I think they did a great job of capturing that. Okay. Um, so, you know, of course, we have the strike, strike going on. Um, one of the things I observed or one of the things I predicted or would predict is that it will create a bigger space for independent films. So my question is to you, how do you think the strike affects um, film festivals like yourself at the DC Black Film Festival or any type of film festival, just it's not big like TIFF or, um, you know, any other bigger uh, film festivals? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, and I'll be honest, I haven't dug into the strike as much, right, in detail because I you know, still kind of, outside of DCBFF, I have, you know, teaching, film professor, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I know that this affects a lot of my friends, right? Friends who are actually in writer's rooms uh, in Hollywood, cinematographers, folks that are working, right? Um, and so how will it affect uh, film festivals? Well, I, honestly, I'm gonna tell you, I feel like people have been making great films independently um, this whole time. Right. So I think for film festivals, um, we're still going to be uh, the folks that are, you know, the tastemakers telling you like, hey, these are the up and coming artists. But one thing that I do hope kind of happens is that um, I always hate when they say this is an independent film, but it's got like a million dollar budget or a 50 million dollar budget. It's just kind of like, really? Like. I can show you some folks that only had $20,000 and they made a masterpiece, you know what I mean? So um, I think to, to be able to see maybe um, some of the major talent kind of getting in the playground with these independent directors and things like that, getting in the sandbox and, and making really great art, I think that would be an awesome, awesome thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I don't think that film festivals will be affected as much by it because there is so much great content out there. It's just a matter of the public knowing that, seeing that, and that's why we exist. Okay, and I want to go back to the DC Black Film Festival. Um, of course, you're expecting a lot from your film festivals going on for the last seven years. Um, what do you see foresee for the future for your your baby, DC? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, one of the things is that I have never. Uh, I've never licensed a film and shown like, like, like we said, like Mission Impossible or, you know, um, something like that to kind of open things up. I've always kept it where it's been independent artists. And the reason being is because really like the films are just as great, right? Um, and so I think that our fan base and the folks that have followed us through these seven years literally there there's some some folks that i know like <laughs> i don't hear from them except for when dcbff starts up but they're they're sure to get their tickets um and even like one uh shout out to kim mallet she said she wouldn't be able to make it in person this year because she's got to do jury duty but she's grateful for the you know virtual selection so uh what i really want to do is start to scale um, I think that we have uh, the, the culture. I think when you come, you, you feel like 
Oh, man, this is it's fun to be here. It's exciting. The filmmakers have given us five stars on Film Freeway. So the filmmakers, they're, they're, they enjoy it. They love it. And without filmmakers, right, we do not have a film festival. So I think we have that. I think now it's just a matter of scaling so that um, we, we're bringing more talent in. And then we're also, in turn, exposing more of the work that um, these independent filmmakers are doing. And so that's really kind of the goal. Like I said, um, this being our seventh year, uh, hopefully we can apply and qualify for um, being an Academy Award nominating film festival, um, because I do think that we see a lot of great talent. Um, a lot of the films that have come through have later gone on to, you know, be acquired by streaming giants or whatever the case may be. And some of the filmmakers as well have gone on to do bigger and better things. So um, that's pretty exciting. Okay, cool. Um, is there anything else you want to add to you know, to let everybody know about your film festival? I mean, one thing I wanted to, to ask you about, because you said that once it once it streams or once it uh, once the films are shown in person, that's it. They're not repeated except for um, virtually. Um, are all the films going to be virtual? Because I know when I go to film festivals, some of them aren't all virtual. Some of them are. You see them in person. That's it. Was so that going to be the same for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that is kind of how it is, um, because we do leave it up to the filmmakers, right? If they want to screen with us virtually or not. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly which ones right now, because uh, we're still kind of getting that information in. But there's like m maybe two or three so far that, you know, I've said that they won't screen. And sometimes it's not because of uh, the fact that they don't want to. It's more because maybe they have a deal that is in the works or something like that. Um, and so they can't, you know, screen it. Others, they have geo restrictions. So, you know, it's only in the United States, right? So that's one of the things about virtual screenings because anybody could have access to it. Um, you won't be able to see all of them, but I would say at the moment, like you're gonna be able to see 62 out of 65 <laughs> of the films. So you, you, won't miss, uh, you won't miss most of them. So in other words, try to see it in person or you might be SOL. <laughs> yeah yeah you said it not me <laughs> but yeah uh, definitely if people want to you know find out more check out the schedule go to dcbff.org um it's just like dc black film festival dcbff.org um and you'll be able to see everything from the schedule how to get tickets if you're trying to actually go to dc and you know hotel accommodations all that good stuff it's right there on the website. So we definitely hope to see you come out. We appreciate the support and it allows us to be able to keep doing the work that we're doing and uh, just telling these stories that are by and or about people of African descent. Okay, thank you, Kevin. And for you all who plan on attending, don't don't forget to go bother and harass Kevin. <laughs> He's there. <laughs> no. for <laughs> if, you can find me, if you can find me, I, I'm usually like sleeping on a step in the middle of a film like in between film blocks so you know i'm that guy <laughs> okay we're gonna say if you find kev he's gonna give you 50 dollars. i'm just joking just, I'm just, just joking. we're not we're not gonna do that <laughs> but hope you come and join us i'll be there um probably the 18th during the night time but i'll be there all day on the 19th so i'm um, glad you're putting this on man as, I, as you said as i said before in the years past i support you and hopefully we continue to see this to grow and uh yeah thank you very much yeah appreciate you Philippe. thank you <laughs>